In the past, the only major emitter of UV light and blue light that we had to contend with was the sun. Today, the sun is still the biggest emitter of damaging UV radiation and HEV, high energy visible light, also known as blue light. But the sun is no longer the only source of blue light. Science has proven that blue light damages our eyes, specifically our retinas, over time. This high energy light may also contribute to or hasten the onset of age-related macular degeneration. It's not just the sun that we need to worry about anymore. Now we have invited blue light indoors. Our environments are loaded with man-made sources of artificial blue light that can impact our vision. Everything from artificial lighting sources to our digital devices, computer screens, flat screen televisions, CFL light bulbs, handheld devices, smartphones and tablets, even ordinary fluorescent light bulbs all emit damaging high energy blue light. And as this blue light enters the eye, it makes its way all the way to the back of the eye, directly to the macula. And through photooxidation, it damages our retinal cells and may lead to AMD. As illustrated, blue light is the highest energy light that actually makes it to the back of the eye in any significant amount. The blue light spectrum ranges from 400 to 500 nanometers. The highest energy wavelength which creates the greatest damage occurs from 400 to 440 nanometers. This is Planck's law. The lower the wavelength, the higher the energy and potential damage. A tiny amount of UV light does reach the eye and must be blocked completely due to surface issues, but it is primarily absorbed by the front of the human lens and never reaches the retina. There is a very small window of transmission of UVB at 320 nanometers that reaches the retina in very young children, but as we mature, that disappears. The back of the eye, the macula, where AMD forms, is thought by many researchers to be greatly affected by blue light, which, along with a number of other factors, can create a cumulative effect which contributes to this degenerative disease. So this begs the question, is all visible light harmful? Not all of it. When we look at the visible light spectrum, we can see that on the red end of the spectrum, the wavelengths are much longer and have less energy. Just above the visible light are radio waves, which are slightly longer. The energy level is lower, which is why it's difficult to use a cell phone in an elevator. The energy level isn't high enough to penetrate. However, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, we can see UV and HEV light, and here the wavelengths are much shorter and have much more energy. This high energy is what makes these wavelengths potentially dangerous. For instance, we know that extended exposure to UV radiation can cause sunburn. High energy visible light, which is blue light, is in close proximity to UV light, and this is the visible light that we are so concerned about today. We now experience this light indoors and at times when we were never exposed to it before, like evening hours and bedtime. The constant presence of this wavelength in our modern environments has health professionals and retina specialists worried about its potential for damage and contribution to AMD. Imagine an old car left out in the weather over the first few years, the car's paint wears away in the open air. Think of this as the first stage of macular degeneration, Drusen spots. If we leave that car out in the weather for a few more years, the exposed metal begins to rust. That's the second stage, or geographic atrophy, and it leads to dry AMD. If we leave the car outdoors even longer, the spots of rust will join together and destroy the structure of the car it will completely collapse. This is stage three, or wet AMD, and it often leads to functional blindness.